everybody, welcome back to the next part of my dialing in series for our Line 6 Helix. Today I'm doing a really fun one, um, and one that's not uh, a particular guitarist or a particular amp, but it's actually trying to come close to recreating all the guitar parts from one of the most uh, iconic, famous uh, rock uh, pop uh, tracks uh, in the history of, uh, of rock pop music, and that's Michael Jackson's Beat It. I mean, what an amazing album that Thriller album was, right? Produced by Quincy Jones. Uh, a good chunk of the band Toto were session mu musicians on the album. Uh, just on Beat It itself, we have, you know, Paul Jackson Jr. being credited with rhythm guitars, Steve Lukather being credited with lead guitars, Eddie Van Halen being credited with lead guitars, and I thought, what a, what a cool one to try to recreate. So I was able to find a backing track online uh, that had absolutely no guitars, but was a really good representation of the uh, rest of the production. So I kind of set out listening very closely to what I feel were the guitar parts mixed in on the original uh, recording on Thriller, uh, fully including uh, Eddie Van Halen's uh, classic guitar solo on that track. One of that, by the way, that was one of the first things I ever heard as a, as a young uh, guy. I think I was 10 or 11, maybe 10 years old when that came out or in and around there. And that just turned my head and that was one of the, the things that got me interested in playing guitar. So this has always kind of held a special place for me, this song and that solo in particular. Um, so uh, yeah, I was able to kind of uh, pinpoint what some of the guitars were doing and it's, uh, it's a five snapshot preset, believe it or not. So please go listen to the performance video and then hear what I, you'll hear an explanation in, in uh, this video as to how I, I kind of recreated all of those parts. And again, I'm not claiming it's exact, that would be impossible. I have no idea what gear was used on any of this. Um, and I don't really care, I'm just using my ear to kind of get close and picking the amps that I figured would, would be best. So let's go over to HXZ and take a look at some of the things that I did on here. So as I mentioned, I had five snapshots and you'll see them here, rhythm one, rhythm two, rhythm three, rhythm four, and lead. Rhythm one, is going to be kind of the main uh, riff uh, that we all know so well. I'm, I'm guessing which was played by Paul Jackson Jr. Rhythm two is going to be a secondary tone uh, for that same riff uh, and for other little parts throughout the song. Um, it sounded to me like there was two very distinct tones panned out left and right playing that same riff and that's what gave it its, its unique sound. Um, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go in. Rhythm three is very similar to rhythm two but is kind of what I'm guessing is Steve Lukather's lead part, those little uh, lead fills. Rhythm four is this extremely clean um, choppy staccato -y playing that happens uh, through half of the verse and half of the chorus usually or a portion of the chorus anyways. And uh, lead obviously is gonna be Eddie Van Halen's solo tone, uh, the, the, the iconic classic solo that he played on this tune. So let's dive in. It's a little bit of a complex um, preset in the sense that I use multiple amps uh, on one preset I don't even, or one snapshot, sorry, I don't even use amps at all. So let's take it a snapshot at a time. We'll take it a look through right now and see the things that I did not change from snapshot to snapshot, okay? So the compressor at the end, my typical settings to glue everything together, peak reduction on the LA Studio Comp, peak reduction of 5.5, gain at five, mix at 100%. That's on all the time and it stays exactly as such. There's gonna be a whole bunch of changes to the EQs as we go through, so we'll, we'll take that on a snapshot by snapshot basis. Uh, the reverb basically stays the same. It's a room verb, decay of 6.1, pre-delay of 25 milliseconds, mix of about 45%, that doesn't change. The delay only comes on, I believe, on the lead, um, and we'll come back and talk about that when we, uh, when we deal with that. Um, there's going to be some changes to the low and high shelf with snapshots as well, so we'll come back to that. We've got a graphic EQ, which is gonna be a part of a particular snapshot. So, and a, and a compressor here that turns off on and off uh, only for one snapshot, and a chorus that he's used on a few of the snapshots. So let's take this snapshot at the time, probably the easiest way to do this. So what I did for this first rhythm track is I started off with uh, the German Mahadeva model, which is the Bogner Shiva model we have in the Helix, with its normal stock cab, with its 112 Lead 80, which I believe is a, a model of the Bogner cab. Um, mic is a 160 ribbon mic, distance of six inches back, 
low cut and high cut off in that. Now, the settings I used for that to get this tone uh, were drive of 1.8, bass on zero, mids on zero, treble on 9.5, presence on 9.5, channel volume at 9.5, and master at 4.8, and I did not touch the deeper functions. Okay, this amp is off, this EQ block is off, this compressor is off. I did add a touch of chorus to this sound. Uh, note sync, I, the tempo of the song is approximately 140 beats per minute, which I set up here. So I set this to note sync at a whole note, depth of two, pre-delay of five, wave shape is sine, and uh, tone of five, mix of 50%, and that's on just the chorus effect. Um, our low and high shelf EQ, I went to all the frequencies below 590 hertz and pulled out 5 dB. And I went to all the frequencies above 6 kilohertz and I boosted those by 11 dB, all right? Um, the reverb we already talked about. So the EQ settings for this particular snapshot was the low frequency set at 450 hertz with a Q of 0.9 and a low gain of minus 4.8. So I dialed out 4.8 dB of those frequencies. Uh, I went to one kilohertz with a Q of 1.7 and boosted those 3.1 dB. And I set my high frequency at 2.5 kilohertz with a Q of 2.4 and I dialed those back by 7.4 dB. So that kind of offset the big boost with the shelf that I put in there, okay? So let's do this. Let's turn off, um, these EQs, okay, uh, and the compression. And we'll just go with this as how the amp sounded on its own, okay? And here's that famous riff. <laughs> All right, so what happens when I come in, turn the compressor on? Very subtle compression, but it just sat in the mix nicely. I'll turn on the low and high shelf EQ. Just kind of brightened it up and took some of the mud out of it. And then I'll turn on the final EQ here. And that was the final tone for snapshot number one. All right. Well, that tone didn't quite give me what I was looking for. I panned that out. I can't remember either to the left or the right. I'd have to look at my project file again. And then I went to snapshot two, which as we notice here, switches amps. There's no more chorus on it. Um, the amp I went for was the Tweed Blues Bright because this other guitar, this complimentary guitar, sounded much more like a Fender style amp to me. I have no other reason to say that other than the fact that I'm using my ears and that's what it sounded like. I'm guessing that this is the rig Steve Lukather played through because it's very similar to the little lead parts, not the solo, but the little lead, uh, almost lead rhythm parts that are in there. So I'm guessing Paul Jackson Jr. was maybe playing through the other one and Steve Lukather playing through this one. Again, total speculation. I don't need to hear any comments about why that's wrong. I have no idea. So it could very well be wrong. I'm just making deductions as I, as I go through this listening. Uh, and it's probably a decent chance I am wrong. <laughs> uh, so Tweed Blues Bright through the uh, 4x10 Tweed P10R with a uh, Shure SM57 dynamic mic at an inch back, okay? So the settings for that were drive at 5.9, bass was at four, mids were at zero, treble at 7.9, presence at 8.1, channel volume on 10 and master on 10, didn't touch the deeper functions again. Um, the EQ now changed a bit on the low shelf. The high shelf still boosted all the frequencies above six kilohertz by 11 dB, but now I went to all the frequencies below 750 hertz and pulled those back five dB. Okay, and the EQ here, I'm not sure if this actually changed at all. Ah, yes, it actually did quite a bit. <laughs> okay, so um, low frequency, 450 hertz, uh, low Q, or the Q that on that frequency of 2.3 and pulling that back 4.8 dB. The mid frequency is at 850 hertz with a Q of 2.1 and I'm pulling that back 12 dB, so a very dramatic move there. And then 2.5 kilohertz with a Q of 2.4 pulled back 7.4 dB. The low cut is at 300 hertz on this, and the high cut moves all the way down to 4.5 kilohertz. A pretty dramatic 
uh, change in a lot of the EQs. And again, let's turn the EQs off and we'll listen to what this tone sounds like with just the amp, okay? <laughs> Very grainy, typical kind of, you know, driven Fender amp, right? Let's turn the high and low shelf on. Lots of sizzle, right? And then let's put the other EQ back in. As you can see, that one's very important. It really cuts a lot of the unnecessary low end and high end um, kind of graininess, but still allows some of it through to cut in the mix. So this is the tone that would probably surprise a lot of people to know that there's something like this in that production. But when mixed in with uh, Rhythm 1 or Snapshot 1 and then panned, it gives that sound or very close pro approximation to it. So here is this tone, again, uh, playing that sort of classic main riff. <laughs> Okay, so again, kind of strange on its own, but works really nice when mixed in with Snapshot 1 and panned out. So again, go listen to the performance video and you'll get to hear it. I'm playing my Yamaha Pacifica 611, one of my favorite guitars, just on the bridge pickup with the uh, Duncan pickup. Can't remember which model it is, but I uh, love that pickup. It sounds great. All right, so Rhythm 3, I call Rhythm 3 because, you know, this part is almost like a, a lead part in a sense. Um, but uh, I believe this is what Steve Lukather played, if I'm judging by what I've read in the credits, okay? So we stay on the Tweed Blues Bright. We add the chorus uh, back into it, I believe with the same settings we had for Rhythm 1. Yeah, so the chorus settings haven't changed. But the settings on the amp do, uh, as you'll see here. You'll see a few things move around a bit. I add a little more beef to it and take a little bit of the high end out. But the drive goes up or the drive sort of stays at 5.9. Bass goes up to 7.4, treble to 7.7, .7, presence to 7.4, and everything else stays the same. Uh, EQ-wise, I believe everything stayed the same as Rhythm 2, and this EQ as well, I don't believe there was any changes, no. So I kept it very close, just adding a little bit less high end in presence and a little more bottom end from the amp itself, okay? And this uh, snapshot sounded like this for this part. And really that's the only part it was used on uh, in the intro and then before the solo. It might sound, at first listen, kind of grainy and not like what's going on, but when you really go listen to that mix, that has some cut to it, and it sounds an awful lot like the other snapshot that I was using for. And then snapshot one. You know, a little more overdriven, very smooth, not much cut, but then when we complement it with this. Pan the out, we get this really amazing guitar tone and then add this over top of it to very few sections of the song. With a dab of chorus. All right, so that's pretty cool. Hopefully you guys are following along okay. Lots to get to here. Now, one part that I heard in here, Snapshot 4, uh, which is Rhythm 4, if you notice I turn all the amps off, a chorus comes on, a compressor comes on at the beginning, a graphic EQ, a 10 band graphic EQ with some crazy things. This sounded to me like a, this tone wasn't played through an amp and it's a very subtle part in the song. It sounds more like they went direct into a mic preamp or right into the board or something, which is a common thing to do in the 80s when the, these productions were being made. It's still kind of a common thing to do at times. Get that ultra clean kind of tone and these were like funky parts for this, right? So I set the compressor um, with a threshold of minus 34 dB, ratio of four, attack rather fast of two milliseconds. On this, you could almost even go faster than that, you know? You really want to clamp down on that initial attack. Release of 50 milliseconds, uh, level was boosted by 16 dB, and a mix of 100%. Uh, the chorus stayed the same. Now, to tone shape, I decided to use a graphic EQ. And I used a 10 band graphic. I pulled minus 15 dB out of the first four bands. 31.25 hertz, 62.5 hertz, 125 hertz, 250 hertz, all got minus 15 dB. So 15 dB pulled out of it. 500 hertz I only pulled minus 9.6 dB. Uh, one kilohertz I pulled all 15 dB out again. 
Two kilohertz, I pulled back minus 6.8 dB, and four kilohertz and eight kilohertz, I boosted 15 dB, and 16 kilohertz, I boosted 6.4 dB, and I boosted the level up a bit to get some, uh, some more volume out of this. I turned the high and low shelf off, kept the reverb on. The EQ at the end here, I believe, also changed quite dramatically. So, uh, 450 hertz with a Q of 2.3, I just zeroed that off, so that's not even affecting things anymore. Um, and in fact, actually, sorry, I'm sorry. What I did is I zeroed this off so that none of these bands were affecting everything. If you notice, all of the uh, DB settings are back to zero. Uh, sometimes I do these and it's a few days later when I shoot the uh, video and I can't actually remember what I did. So I, it's kind of all new to me as I'm, I'm going through it too. So, so those are all zeroed off. Low cut at 100 hertz, high cut at nine kilohertz. Okay, and the compressor at the end stays on. And that's what this sounds like on these little parts that are played. The, the verse part goes like this. That's it. And then every now and then, every kind of like four bars in the, in the chorus, you get this. For four bars, while the other guitar is riffing on with those different tones. So really cool kind of little compressed. and it worked really nice. Again, go listen to the performance video, you'll hear that sneaking in and out, okay? So, so far, what you're gonna hear rhythm one on in the performance video is the main riff, in the intro and all the choruses, okay? Uh, you're gonna hear it in the verse where there's only really one guitar at some points going, Okay, and that's the only times you'll hear that, but that's a, a huge part of the song. Uh, rhythm two, you will hear doubling up all of the points where this riff has been played. So complementing rhythm one, all right? That's the only points you hear it. And right before the solo, uh, where he's just simply going, Right, in that rhythm part. So that's where you hear that. Rhythm three is simply gonna be heard when these parts come in, which is really only on the intro and then right before the chorus, a simplified version of that, just on the first half. And the first time you hear it, you hear like a bunch of muted scratching to start it off. And then for rhythm four, we're gonna hear that on two occasions, the part in the verse that goes, and in the chorus. And that is the rhythm section part of the guitars in those four snapshots. So please go listen to the performance video. I'd really like to everybody to hear it. It kind of came together really cool. Um, I, I really liked it. So now probably what everybody's been waiting for, snapshot five, the lead. So for snapshot five, I basically go back to uh, no chorus, no compressor at the beginning. Uh, the German Mahadeva again with some slightly different settings. No difference on the cab or mic. But the amp uh, drive gets boosted to 6.9 to give more gain. Uh, bass on zero, mid on zero, treble on 9.5, presence on 9.5, channel volume at 10, and master at 4.8. Obviously, this graphic EQ is turned off as well as the Fender style amp. I go back to, um, I believe, the original setting on Rhythm One. I, it's a very similar um, preset or snapshots as Rhythm One, just with more gain. I really don't think I changed too much. Did add a delay in, uh, set to a quarter note, feedback of 23%, wow and flutter 3.6, uh, mix of 28%, reverb stayed the same. And I'm not sure if this changed at all, no. So it basically is just like Snapshot 1 without the chorus, with a little more gain added on the amp, and that's essentially it, okay? And so that sounds like this. <laughs> I don't know, 
know if I really played that anywhere close to being right, but that's sort of the gist. I actually think I did a better take uh, on the uh, performance video. I think I like one take, I did it, and it was it was pretty cool. I, that solo is kind of ingrained in me, I think, from listening to it so many times as a kid. Uh, so so nice. So a really cool lead tone for a lot of things. Not even just that solo or this song. <laughs> You know, it's, it's got a real smoothness to it, but it still cuts and, and a, lot, a lack of low end that helps it to kind of not get in the way of, of the lower end stuff in the rhythm section. <laughs> So really nice stuff uh, for a lot of different possibilities. What do you guys think? I hope you guys like it. Those are some fun tones and I hope I got pretty close. You know, again, like I said, you know, I get so many comments about, oh, how this doesn't sound right. And then, you know, I'm really just going by ear on these and getting something in the ballpark. I have no idea what gear was used. Microphone, room, what was done after the fact. Uh, you know, in the mix, the master, and everything else. So it's it's not a it's not an easy thing to to come to, and there's nothing scientific about doing this. It's a lot of just listening and seeing what kind of fits, comparing it to the original, and getting something close. But I think for anybody who wants to come at least close, this is going to get you very close. So again, go listen to the performance video, like I've probably said about six times already. Um, and just I just want you to hear how those those sounds all blend into the mix, and uh, and hear how how that turned out. So this will be up on Custom Tone, guys. Go grab it. I hope somebody gets something out of it, even if you just use one snapshot or, or uh, you know, multiple uh, snapshots from this, even in other productions. And I hope, uh, you know, somebody can get some, some use out of it. So as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please share the video if you don't mind. Like it. Uh, help. Thanks for all the support. Really appreciate you guys. Uh, with the, the kind words and comments as well. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'll be back with uh, a lot more content. Have some new stuff coming up on Marketplace soon that I'm really happy with, actually, and uh, more news on that in the very near future. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, and ciao for now.